In today's episode of Help I Sex and My Boss, Jordan's back from his luxury holiday to Skegness. William and Mike here getting worried about being interred. And we've got a letter from an ugly punter. If you've enjoyed this episode, hit the like and subscribe button and watch us every Wednesday and Friday. Back in this country for about three minutes and you have uh, not only Thank you. made everyone change microphones, we've now got new mic arms. They're not good enough for you. You want, new, you want even different Can ones. Can I just say, I've been asking about the, for these microphones for two years now. If you watch every other podcast video, they've got proper mic. Like, not proper mic. I mean, we had very, very advanced microphones. No, we did. But Stuart, our exec... What's he called? What's the... Uh, oh, Chairman Emeritus. Chairman Emeritus, who is very passive. Um, let's literally, let's get away with murder. But he says, I, I put my foot down on the mics. I do. And we're not changing mics been having this argument we try arguing with a welshman for two years over mics oh god well you've won anyway what else were you gonna say uh you've spilled water all over the place you know, uh, bl- blue roll blue roll i did just demand blue roll anyway sorry love you guys the Thank bitch you. is back the bitch is back baby <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life, answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, how do we top becoming authors of a Sunday Times bestseller? (laughs) Can I ask, is that an everyday dilemma? No. No. (laughs) And should you get in touch with your doppelganger? And what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But we're not usually like any ants. Are we William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert and Sunday Times bestseller? <laughs> no, we're not Jordan North, radio presenter and Sunday Times bestseller. I'm more Glyndebourne, you're more Glastonbury. And that's from Johnny. What I the like that. hell's Glyndebourne? What the hell is Glyndebourne? Oh my God. Pearls before swine. It's the original festival. It's an opera festival in Sussex. Glyndebourne Opera Festival. Uh, everyone wears black tie. It sounds like it sounds like an operation. I've got glime balls. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna kick you right in the glime balls. No, you yeah. know, like when people have the gold stones. What's that thing that people, old people get? Gold stones. No, gold bladders. What's <laughs> it? Yeah, but you can stones. get gold stones as well. Sounds like that. Right. Well, it's not that. I can assure you, it's anyway. worlds apart. Um, should we have Arjun and Debonnet? Oh yes, please. Do you want we... to do the gym? Yeah. Are we are we filming this? We are. I don't want any videos going out this week. I've just got back off holiday and I have eaten my body weight and over in cheese and ham toasties, food, room service, you name it. Okay. Beers. Right. Well. Go on, I'll have a drop. That'll do. There we go. Um who, should we toast? Should we toast the Sunday Times? I say for making us a bestseller. They don't. It's all done on quantities that you've shifted. It's not nothing really to do with them. But we'll toast them. Yeah, toast them. Just to pre-warn you. Cheers. And to everyone who has bought but, the book. We're not going to harp on about the book for this episode because we did that in the last one. But we can I just say, I um, did not think that mm. we were going to get on the Sunday Times bestseller with you going away. With me going away. Hmm. The day the book got released. Yeah. Also, that list, the, the people in there. Yes. Boy George. Yeah. Jeremy Clarkson. Stuart Broad. Stuart Broad. I knew Stuart do well. I said then I want yeah. to see him. Barbara Streisand. Barbara Streisand. This yes. is quite a list to be on there with. The England manager. The England manager. Serena Vigman. Oh, Serena Vigman. Is he on there? She. She? Who? Serena Vigman. Yeah. The England yeah. manager of what? The, the, the England. Is that who it is? Yeah, a women's football. All right. God. No, no, no. I mean, I, do, I wouldn't even know who the man's who one is. is like, we, oh, Arnold yes. Schwarzenegger. Gee, it was so... It, we just can... I wish you could see our WhatsApp group over the past week. <laughs> I can't believe it. And we beat Nadine Dorries as well. And we beat Nadine Dorries yes. as well. Shock. Um, well, that's marvellous. We're delighted. There is a copy of the um, Culture Supplement of the Thank Sunday you. Times for you. So let you. me watch it. Is that Eric Cantor? <laughs> yeah, somehow they didn't have a copy of the Sunday Times in Skegness. We'll come mm. on to that in a minute. I want to ask you all about it. Ask away. But yeah, um, we are Sunday Times bestsellers, and that's a bit of a humble brag. And thank you to everyone who bought it. Let me see it in person. Oh. It's halfway through the magazine. Prime position. There you go. Did you keep the culture one? Did you keep? I want to read Dear Dolly. That is, that is the culture one. I mean, one. the um, style one. Uh, no, I threw that oh, out. Oh, we've just in the crown. Yes, I want to talk to you about the crown in a minute as well. <laughs> what is it here? No, keep going, keep going. There. Oh, there it is. J 
General Hard Backs. <laughs> there we are. Yeah, Billy Conley as well on there. And don't forget Britney Spears and Matthew Perry. Rest yes. in peace. Indeed, Britney's still alive, but Britney Matthew Spears. Perry has sadly died. Uh, anyway, Skegness. Yes. How was I? Hardly recognise you with your clothes on. Oh, thank you. It was. Uh, it, it it was really good. Was it? Now I, I did say beforehand that I, I bought some short shorts. I bought some <laughs> four inch shorts the day before I left. Right. <laughs> and what's that measuring? All I'm going to say is they were too short. <laughs> right. And I've got <laughs> really badly burnt thighs. Oh. If you to the point where I've. That's why when you text me before, I was just putting a bit of after sun on my thighs. Okay. If you're listening in Wigan, that's not my eyes. I know you call your th eyes your thighs. Do you? I used to work with your girl <laughs> at Rock FM. She said, I'm off tomorrow afternoon. I'm going to opticians to get my thighs looked at. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. I went, you are? She went, my thighs. So they've been playing up. I can't see. What? She said, get my thighs done. Um, but it was great. I, I'm, I'm, uh, are we allowed to say this? Well, can you just tell the way you? Because do you know? Well, when, just don't bet, give up. Just don't. I, I've been to Skegness, right? And I've actually brought you. I've got. I've got really. Oh, burnt last, thighs. last year, I remember you brought me something. I back. brought. Now I know that you like your little fancy hats and stuff. <laughs> What's that hat you've got that you wore to Benidorm? My Panama fedora. Right, I've got you an equivalent. <laughs> there, lovely. It you. says Skegness on the side of it. <laughs> okay. <what's>, okay. <laughs> now. <laughs> Put it yes. On. Put it on. Can I just say, th how long have we known each other? Yeah. How big is my head? Yeah, very. Just try it on. I know you'd like that. Oh, look at that! You look like Ollie Murs. Give it a bit of a. <laughs> bit look, of a what? Look into Show the off camera. What's on the side by looking to the right? Is it that way? Yeah. Yeah. What does it say on the side? Skegness. It says Skegness on the side. Yes. And I got you this. I was having a look in the gift shop. At Skegness Head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, when Ben and I were touring the land uh, with the book tour, it's amazing how many people do you actually think you went to Skegness? No, I had a local councillor from Skegness DM me. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, asking if, if I'm staying in the area and he can, sh and there's, there was a couple, of, I'm not even wrong, there's a local Skegness cafe that said we'd love to. Love to host yeah, you. So I got this for you at Skegness Airport. <laughs> and it reminded me, you know, when we was out in the summer and we had, um, we was out in the, on the box terrace. What is it you call box? it? Oh, my, oh, the, the, the terrace. The terrace. Yes. And um, we were struggling. This is very chic and it's very you. And I, I, you didn't have one of these when I was round. No. Last time. Do you want to tell everyone what it oh is? Oh my it's gosh, nice. it's beautiful. All is right, it... Ben. <laughs> Is it Emma's? Um, it's a lovely I Love Skegness ashtray. <laughs> and it's it's really chic and cool, it's isn't so it? Chic. It's so colourful. Yeah. So many colours on it. Little dolphins, hand painters. Dolphins, some stingrays, some fish, a turtle. I've seen some turtles. Some yeah. coral, coral. Nice. I swam with turtles. Wow. You swam with it was, turtles? It was amazing. Is that cold? It, it, it was a bit cold in the old Skegness <laughs> sea, but it was honestly... <laughs> We went to this little By the time we'd come out, they were three inch shorts. Is that hard? <laughs> <laughs> they, they oh, snap, lovely. They go for you, but you just, yeah, it was amazing. Oh. I went snorkeling. Well, thank you so much. That's so kind. I mean, all those cigarettes I have, that'll be. So that'll that's be for your uh, thing there. On my terrace. Um, I mean, if, Gosh, I if hope you're not I watching on YouTube, then you have no idea. Yeah, if you're not watching on YouTube, you'll have no idea what, we, uh, what we're showing. But um, gosh, well, that's beautiful. I hope I don't drop it. Um, <laughs> Also, I had um, I had toothache out there. Is this the start of a joke? No, I had a genuinely <laughs> had um, toothache out there, and uh, I ended up getting some foreign medication. Okay. Oh, like I think it was you know like we say American medications are a lot stronger. Yeah. And in like in Spain, you can just get antibiotics from mm. chemist. So I got like this gel and yeah. some <laughs> their version of paracetamol. Mm -hmm. William, a whiteed. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> um, well, how can you explain whitey in? When know. do you pass out? Yeah, yeah. You, you're a bit sick and you go pale. Ooh. I was absolutely honestly. I was off. Oh, Call the cops. I was off my chops <laughs> on this tooth medication stuff. 
got a dentist appointment yesterday. Okay. It's all going on in Skegness. It is I don't know if I swam on. with turtles or not. I might have just hallucinated <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> so you didn't, get the, you didn't get those on the NHS? No, not in... No. 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 Not in Skegness. No, not in Skegness. <laughs> they've got, I've, they've I've, got Booper I think Skegness. I swam with turtles, but I, I also at one point I was, I was flying with dolphins in the sky, so... <laughs> right. Yeah. So I don't know. Just recollections may, may vary. vary. Well, uh, what a lovely royal segue. Uh, how was the crown? Oh, it's fantastic. I watched it. I, I, I cried all the way through. I know, so, so camp. I love it. I cried. I text you going, how was the crowd? I've cried all the way through. <laughs> so far. It wasn't camp, young On the holiday. I cried all the way through it from start to finish. When you went, like, well, it's pretty inaccurate, I grant you. Ow. What? Well, it, I mean, they got a couple of significant events happened, but other than that... When it, he said, my darling boy, on end of his bed. Oh, God. And oh. that actually happened because that's in Harry's book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. There are, there are. It's not all. It's not all bad. It's beautifully I mean, made. The scenes in it, I love it. I, I, you, you, you're not the big fan. I think it's fun. The scenes in it where you think, would Charles really have screamed at his mother and give her a dressing gown? Probably a dressing down. So yeah, you look cold. <laughs> It's always on the mind. <laughs> you want the belt? <laughs> <laughs> but um, other than that, it's great. Yeah. How? What do you make of it? No, I, I look. I thought it was better than series five, um, but uh, and we've obviously only got four episodes so far. I am looking forward to the next four. I, I enjoy watching it. It's beautifully made as a piece of television. You know, every department does their does their thing. But um, you know, it's when they start. You know, oh, Princess Margaret attending the birthday party for Camilla, the 50th. She didn't go. Did she phone her sister afterwards? No. Just, and I put, and I also think that the reality is so much more interesting than anything that any writer can make art. Yes, but people will then take it as, oh, that's history. Oh, I know all about the royal family now because I've watched The Crown. No, take it with a pinch of salt. Yes, but we can, but some people don't, and that annoys me. You mean the Americans? Well, and Brits as well, oh. and other nationalities. Anyway. How was your week? How was the book tour without me? The passive-aggressive book tour that wasn't a book oh, tour. Oh, do we have... Oh, we didn't bring in Card Borden. I did not bring in Card Borden, I'm afraid. He is... You're still in my boot. <laughs> you know that... The, the one of me... The cardboard cutout you had of me in the suit? Mm. That pic- is that the one after Skegness? That was the picture of... <laughs> that picture was taken the day after Skegness last yes. year. Yeah, that I was could, Yeah, sorry. Yeah. We, yeah, we had two versions of you. Um... Well, it was lovely. We had a lovely time in uh, Sheffield, in Wakefield, in Cardiff and Bristol. So thank you to everyone that came to say hello. That was lovely. Um, Mikey and I, w- w- with, with, the, um, with the cardboarden, came a mini cardboarden as well, a smaller version. I Where's think... this going? No. <laughs> Mikey and I. Now have this game where we will take oh, it in God. turns. Oh, God. <laughs> where are you going with this? We hide you in different places in the flat. Oh, right. For God. the other one to find. So we've had Jordan in the fridge. I was about to hit you on the head with the ashtray then. <laughs> what was a bit EastEnders. Like Saskia in EastEnders. Yes. <laughs> Do you remember Saskia? It was yes. um, Martin Kemp that killed... What was he called? Steve Owen. Yes, it was. It was on my birthday. It was Valentine's Day. How does everyone know these references to EastEnders? When did Saskia, she got clouted on Edwin and ashtray. ashtray. Anyway, carry on. Yeah. So you've been hiding me. Uh, I've been hiding you all over the flat. We've we've had you in the uh, laundry closet. We've had you... This morning, I, I went to go and get a shirt and you <laughs> just fell down from between my shirts because he'd sort oh. of slotted you in between. We've had you in bed. <laughs> what, the first time? As it were. Uh, it's great. Hours of fun. Hi, Jordan. This, this, I um, put you in the cutlery drawer. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah, so as you open the drawer, there's Jordan's face. Another reason why I'm never getting married. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll back you up on the, the marriage thing, because uh, now that we have got married, we've passed our one-year anniversary. Do you know what Mikey said to me the other day? In all seriousness, he just sort of sat up from the sofa and said, we should probably think about where we're going to be interred. <laughs> interred? Yeah. <laughs> but where our ashes are going to go, because apparently we've got to, you know, when you die, you often go next to your spouse. And now he's thinking of that. And then he said, he's he went... so dramatic. Interred? What shit got to do with it? No, no. No, when you get cremated, they give you the ashes in a pot. And they call it interred. You can either have that scattered or you can bury the ashes. And apparently we're being interred. And Mikey is, quote unquote, I'll now look into urns, is what he then said to me. Wow. So, I tell you, welcome you, to married life, everyone. You, you should have a little bit in your coffee. <laughs> so. You've done that joke before. Um, so you can be in your one last time. 
funny. Um, in other news, I don't know whether you noticed this, Jordan, when you came in, because obviously you sort of came in a little bit like a tornado, but have you noticed Ben's ear? Ben, come here. No, other ear. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come oh, on, and not... you better show the camera. you got your ear pierced? <laughs> oh, yep. God. What have you got around your neck? He's got another chain. Oh, that's a nice chain. Show us your ear. Oh, God. <laughs> the camera. <laughs> oh, Christ alive. Turn it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask why you've got that done? Why was you, it to make why you more... are you wearing that jumper, William? Oh, <laughs> yeah, but the good news is I can. Re... <laughs> He's got his ear pierced. It looks like some other pet shop boys. <laughs> <laughs> I say this in a nice way. Did you get it just to make you slightly more interesting? <laughs> <laughs> I can't take him serious. Is it real? Or in case you break down. <laughs> <It's not true. laughs> Oh, you're going to go septic? Well, if you touch it, maybe. Oh. Yeah. Was it now? Ben also. Why? Ben I would mean, like... we're not laughing. We're too. We are cruel. Well, you are laughing. Stay here. Stay with us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take it serious. What's he that? You nearly. What's... You're nearly thirty. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his slutty earpiece. I got him too jet lagged for this. Could you also tell Jordan what happened when you had it done? <laughs> Okay, well, should I go sit in my seat and I can tell you from yeah, my seat? Go and sit okay, seat, go and sit so. in your seat. Okay. I, I can't face yeah. this anymore. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to put a plaster Honestly. on it when you can swim in like Honestly. the girls in PE? Honestly, there's going to be so many messages about how horrible you are to me. I know, no. oh, sorry. I hope, I hope you're ready for that. Um, All right. So, yeah, I had, it, I had it pierced on Friday. Just show us it again. <laughs> <laughs> To be honest with you, because we you didn't mention on our book event tour, we stayed over at your parents' house, William. Oh my god, we got to talk about was, that. Um, very was we had a lovely time. Um, continued to cement my position as their favourite member of the podcast yeah. team. I feel, um, and I was tempted to get it the day before that trip. I thought <laughs> probably not the best thing for. No, I'm not sure Brian and Sarah would have approved. Brian and Sarah to see. No. So I got it done on Friday, um, and Cat came along to old man. <laughs> and what happened in the salon? Well. I'm not very good with needles, you see. So, <laughs> God, I was really nervous. Like, really nervous. Yes. Um, and this was in my lunch break. And anyway, so it happened. He says quickly. And yeah, very much in my lunch break. <laughs> lunch break. And I, yeah, the, the piercing happened. And then I, I sort of had to say, look, I think I'm going to have to lie down. <laughs> <laughs> so I was already, I was already like sat on like the bed, but I was like, I need to sitting. lie down. Sitting. The problem is um, that we were sort of in this area where there's like a huge window and like loads of people were having their lunch outside the window. <laughs> so the woman who was doing the piercing was like, right, shut the blinds, shut the blinds. <laughs> <laughs> so Kat was like, shh. <laughs> and I was just lying there for five minutes. And then, and then Kat said, oh no, don't worry. Just take your time. Take your time. It's fine. Two minutes later, oh, I've actually got a meeting at two, so I have to leave you here. <laughs> so, did it actually hurt? It doesn't. It didn't hurt, but it, no, it just it's just me it's out. the thought. Have yes. you always, are you going to get a bigger ring or? <laughs> How about the ear? Well, <laughs> there are other places you can get pierced, famously, but I think we'll yes. Stick can we ask? I, I thought you'd get, you'd always get your nose pierced first. <laughs> His <laughs> nose. Yeah. You're going to say knob then? <laughs> that as well. Um, no, I don't think I can face it again. No, don't have. So I feel like I'll, I'll have this for like a period of time, and then yeah. Sorry for like, and please don't. I actually please think... don't give us like any. We were cruel then, so sorry for. Like... Well, you were in particular. Actually, it's, it's very rare that <laughs> we I, were I'm cruel. I'm, I'm the one that's more compassionate. You <laughs> laughed at a dying dog, you sick fuck. <laughs> <laughs> So don't get me started. <laughs> ben, I actually think it does suit your vibe. Well, this is the yeah, thing. You do this is the thing. I went to, this is like obviously what I wanted to do. Go to run club the next day. Oh, run God. Club. Run club with a piercing. Honestly, I blended in like a piece of camouflage. Does, does it make you run faster or slower, the piercing? Um, well, to be fair, I was still feeling the ill effects of my previous stressful experience. <laughs> run club. A bit of a who's, who's your closest friend at Run Club? <laughs> oh, I, I wouldn't be able to. Know. Just give me a name. The pedometer. Um, I run with Luke every week. Luke, okay. Hello, give me Luke. one of the girls' names that works there, <laughs> that runs there. Um, I went to a gig with Emily on Saturday Okay. Night. Luke and Emily, Run Club. Why? Just wondering. <gasps> Could be a new podcast, Run Club. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we'll ever meet Luke or Emily, or if we're asking to meet Luke well, and Emily? they're always going to my birthday party, William, so... 
Oh, God, here we go. I don't get me started on that. I agree with him there. Let's move on. I am coming. Yeah, about half After left. gay panto. Can't you just move the panto? It's, it's... No, I can't move the panto. See, right, hear me out here. We'll talk about this in, in the bonus or something. <laughs> I know when you've got something in diary, but for stuff like that, you should move for best friends. Well, that's why yeah, well, that's it. fair enough. I, well, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> so move, move the gay, do it another time. I can't move the gay pantomime. But William, what, what are you doing the next day after my birthday party? Well, I'm going to another pantomime with you. But that's... <laughs> <laughs> oh my... Right, anyway. I will be there. What time is it starting? It's on the invite, William. I actually haven't... Yes, you have. Did you email it? No, I put it in the WhatsApp group. Can't you just <sighs> sack the panto off? No, I can't. Why? Oh, oh no, I can't. Oh yes, <laughs> oh, yes, you, oh, can. yes you can. <laughs> it's Ben's birthday. Oh, is he's it your behind 30th? You. Yeah. Is it actually? Yeah. Oh god, how, how old are you when you start this podcast? What's thirty minus five? <laughs> That's six. six. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Jesus. Wow. You're 24 when you start this podcast. Well, I didn't start weren't even shaving. I was, I was still not now. <laughs> I was literally just sat there doing nothing at that point. Still am. Yeah. Still am. We'll talk about Ben's uh, trip to see Brian and Sarah in next Tuesday's episode because I think we'll, we'll we carry that across. We, okay. need to, we need to move on. Should we go to my etymology of the week? Yes, please. So inspired by uh, a conversation, we're going to talk about why uh, wakes are called wakes. Here's the jingle. It's William, William, the etiquette geek. His knowledge, knowledge is quite unique. He'll give you manners, manners, a subtle tweak. It's time for William's etiquette, etiquette, etymology of the week. And I'll tell you why wakes are called wakes after these messages. Okay, Gene Davis, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, it's now time for William Hansen's Etiquette Etymology of the Week, and we're now going to find out why wakes are called wakes. Not to do with Wakefield, this, is it? It's got nothing to do with Wakefield, but they have got a lovely water stones, because uh, I've visited it. Um, anyway, so the wake was originally an Irish tradition, going back to Celtic times, or is it Celtic? I never know. Celtic, Celtic? <laughs> Ask Mikey. Celtic. <laughs> yeah, don't start that one. Mm. What? Celtic. Mikey once it's... was doing a news in his career as a news reader. Do you not remember this? <laughs> no, you've got to explain the, it. Mikey was reading out football results about Celtic uh, at Celtic. At the builder site. At the builder site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> broad, broad. And he said it wrong. And He said uh, in football, <laughs> when he was doing his news reader's voice, he went, Rangers got beat by Celtic. And we were like, <laughs> anyway, bless him. I know. I think it is Celtic in this situation. It's Celtic it? in okay. that, and it's Celtic in, yeah. Right, fine. Anyway, in those times, uh, it was believed to have begun partly as a celebration of the life deceased with music and the sharing of memories. Now, the music played an important part uh, because it was part celebration, but it was also to see if the departed was indeed dead, if they literally woke up after hearing all this music. Um, because obviously, until modern medicine and technology, there wasn't necessarily uh, ways to prove that someone was dead like you can now. So one theory is that that's why the Irish wakes uh, often included music and lasted for two days to give it, you know, a significant amount of time for them to wake up. However, the I'd other... love to go to an Irish wake. <laughs> the other slightly more likely theory is that the wake begun as an all-night prayer vigil for the departed um, and you, the, the grievers, the mourners, were awake in their honour. Um, so, yes, it also gave time for people to travel to the house to pay their respects uh, before modern, uh, modern yeah, forms of like, transport. The, they had, like, the grandma in living room weren't they open casket yeah. yes that still goes on today in some some households yeah. anyway so both you know there are two origins of wakes who knows whether which one is more correct than the other but those are the the two ones that we'll go with wow so it was literally just in effect to see if you were awake that's that's actually really interesting thank you i'd love to go to an irish wake which well, i'm sure get in touch i'm sure we can arrange that just drink it yeah would you like to go to an Irish wake as a guest or as the person we're celebrating? Uh, I mean, even... Again, both can be arranged. Yeah, both could be arranged. Yeah. Even, like, when I go to funerals in Burnley, we all sing Irish songs and none of us are Irish. Everyone claims to have a bit of Irish in them, don't they? Yes. Do you? <laughs> Not currently. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a quarter, I'm a quarter Welsh. Are you a quarter Welsh? Which, I'm, which quarter? I'm a... a not proven, but I'm a distant relative of George North, the uh, Welsh rugby. No, you're not. I Who's am. George North. Yeah, I yeah. am. And you remember Chris North as well, my friend Adrian. Yeah. We think we might be related. The Norths are a massive family in Wales. 
Gosh. From Bri- my granddad was from uh, Mustang Ma- Ma- in Bridgend. Mustang. Really? I always say it wrong and people got mad at me from there. We'll have to get you on that program. We've got any Gene yeah. Divas in Mustang? Let me know. Who does you think you are? Yeah. Who does Jordan North think he is? Yeah. <laughs> Where I'm from, who do you think you are? That's about to start scrapping a pub. <laughs> <laughs> who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? It's another Mickey Club Flanagan joke. I'm sorry. Uh, you are. Sorry. I love it that your joke, you know, when we started the series, your jokes were Peter Kay and you've become so south, now your point of reference is Mickey Flanagan. No, it's because <laughs> he's on my TikTok. Who do you it? think you are? I won't go on that. Would you not? No, oh, with my family. It'd be great. Are you joking? Half of them are bloody inside or strange ways or what have you. No way. They could do a whole series. I say that, my family aren't, but I, I just, I won't, I don't know. Yeah. It'd be quite interesting. Let's go on to the listeners' dilemmas. This one is from Catherine and Jess. Dear William and Jordan, while out for a meal with my daughter recently, we were discussing how soon after paying the bill you were expected to leave. She works at a restaurant and once had a group that paid their bill, but then proceeded to sit at the table talking for another hour. What is the correct etiquette? We both agree that once you've paid, you should leave. Best wishes, Catherine and Jess. It's like a midweek quickie, in and out. That's what I say. I, you know, I'm like, don't like loitering after a meal. In and out, dosh. Douche. Get, dosh. Get it <laughs> right. done. Bosh. Okay. Oh, come jet lagged. Bosh. Melee. Anyway, and don't worry. That's what I say. That's my advice. People that stay around. And it's if, if you paid the bill, I think you should leave in 10 to 15 minutes. In China, it is very bad etiquette. The moment the host has paid, you almost stand up and leave. And yeah. they're much more militant about it. I would say probably five minutes after paying, you have to go. Unless, of course, you have overstayed your welcome. And of course, most restaurants now, when you book, will say, and we'll need the table back by X. I don't like it. I think we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. I don't like it when they tell you that when you arrive. I had it the other night. We went out for dinner with um, some family and they said, and we'll need the table back by nine. It's like, you serve us three courses within the window, we'll be out by nine. But if you fail to come and take our order, we're going to be here for a bit longer. I didn't say that to them, obviously. I said, oh, yes, of course, that's fine. But mm. that's my thought. I, I think no late, longer than 10 to 15 minutes after you've paid the bill. And I'd say five. People have got lives, homes to go on to. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. This is from Rachel. Hi, gentlemen. I have a birthday etiquette question. If I have sent someone a physical birthday card, is it necessary to message or post on social media as well? It feels enough just to send a card. But then when I remember on the day, I feel the need to duplicate my efforts electronically. What is the etiquette? Is it rude not to send a message or post on social media to Rachel? Kiss, kiss. You've got strong opinions about this, haven't you? I do. If you are going to send a birthday card, a birthday is great. Uh, and again, if people send me a birthday card, I'll send them a birthday card. Always nice when your co-host yawns. Jet lag. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> kick in. Dear William, what's the etiquette of yawning? Wait. What is the etiquette? Give me some of that tooth medication. That'll sort me out. Yes. Uh, I would, yeah, if you've sent a card, I would still text them because in this day and age, things go awry, cards don't arrive late. Uh, my friend Tom sent me something a few weeks ago. In fact, he sent a lovely card to say, apparently, to say congratulations on the launch of the book. Still haven't got it. So I would, I would suggest you do also text them or phone them. In terms of social media... <laughs> what? You. Oh, sorry, I'm struggling. Carry on, carry on. Um... In terms of social media, I try not to post, oh, happy birthday to X on social media, because if you do it for one and then you don't do it for another friend, it just creates so much drama. And also everyone always posts a photo of them with the friend as well. And it's normally where you, the poster looks better than the person whose birthday it is. So if you are going to post about someone's birthday, my suggestion is just post a photo of them. Don't have you in it. Sure. You right? Yeah. I've got any matchsticks. <clears throat> We are rushing through these. No, we're not. We're taking our time. Next one. This <coughs> is from Anonymous. Come on, Jordy. Got to go to work. At the time of recording, I literally landed at five o'clock this morning. Bless you. Did you sleep on the plane? So uh, technically, it's half eight in the morning my time now. I like so what, a little top tip for that? yes. Little yeah, there's top a big tip time difference for jet lag. Is to keep your watch on your wrist. Well, respectfully, it hasn't worked because you have yawned for the last five minutes. <laughs> Yeah, but now it's because my mind knows now what time I'm on. I think jet lag, anyway. <laughs> have you got any of that serotonin? Serotonin? Melatonin. Oh, melatonin. Should you should have bought some, yeah, I've got loads. Mm. Our friends Harry and Declan have just brought back another supply for us. Christ. Anyway, yeah. carry on. Sorry, I'm fine. Bloody skegness, never again. <laughs> have you booked it again for next year yet? Yeah. <laughs> 
Maybe. Right. This is from Anonymous. Dear William Jordan and EPB, I'm in desperate need of your advice. Having recently qualified as an accountant, I applied for a new job. The first interview and aptitude test went well, and I was thrilled to be invited for a second interview, this time with the director of HR. On the day, the weather was extremely warm, so I chose my outfit to avoid obvious perspiration. I opted for a lightweight calf-length skirt, an elasticated waist, smart sleeveless blouse and coordinated jacket. What lovely. I was nervous and gabbled a bit, but remained cool and it seemed to go well. At the end of the interview, the director thanked me for my time and interest, stood up and held out his hand. I stood to shake his. Unfortunately, as I got to my feet, I stood on the hem of my skirt, which meant it didn't come up with me. I kegged myself. Uh, what is kegged? When you get kegged. <laughs> yes. Which, by the way, is illegal nowadays. What? Uh, talked about on the radio and but what is kegging? When you keg someone, when you whip the pants down, the trousers, everyone used to do it at school, especially in PA, when they have to keg shorts. But you can't do it now because it's a form of sexual assault. Oh, right. Yeah. Good to so know. So you know, like, you're, you're in PA. Yes. Yeah. And you're pulling some well, what? shorts down. My, um, I didn't do PA. My 18th birthday, mm. my um, Uncle Brian, this sounds weird, <laughs> made, me, made me get my first round in. I went coaching horses in Burnley and I come back with my first round. I was like, we my 18th birthday, my first legal round and a big tray full of Guinness and lager. I'm holding it and he comes up to me and he, as I've got the tray in my hands, mm -hmm. yeah, he undid my belt <laughs> and kegged me in the pub. <laughs> and I couldn't do it because I was holding a tray. I mean, he didn't fully, I had my boxes on and stuff, but it was, right. yeah. Well, hello to Uncle <laughs> Brian. Anyway. It sounds weird, but it weren't. It was, no, no. Yeah, yeah it anyway, doesn't at all. She kegged herself. My knickers were clean, but had I thought I was going to reveal them in full, I might have worn something a bit fancier. Poker faced, he simply said, that really wasn't necessary. I was going to offer you the position. <laughs> <laughs> to add to the pressure, when given a tour of the office, I was told my desk would be right outside his office. What do I do? I'm mortified. I need and want the job, but how do I handle the embarrassment? Your advice would be hugely appreciated. Many thanks. Anonymous. Anonymous. It, I think his response, as long as it made you feel uncomfortable, was great. He was in on the joke, and I think you, you're slightly overthinking it. They've offered you the job. I thought that was such a good response from him. And in years to come, mm. when you you love this job, you're doing really well. It'll be a lovely story you're leaving, dude. You will laugh about this every Christmas day. Mm. And you and your boss, the head of HR, you'll, you'll laugh it <laughs> off. So don't worry. It could have been worse. Yeah, and I would also really hope the head of HR was not going to be inappropriate with you anyway. If yeah. He's, he's in the wrong job. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I would sweep it under the carpet. Don't say anything about it. If you want the job, take the job. Um, it's a funny story. It's, time is a great healer. Thank God we don't have an HR here. Yeah. We then. <laughs> well, we, what? Well, we just literally laughed at your earring for 10 minutes. If we did that in any other workplace, we'd, we'd probably get a written warning. Yes, probably. Sorry. I, I will be talking to Chairman Emeritus. Ch Chairman what? Chair Emeritus, right? Emeritus. 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 One more? Yeah. yeah. We've got half an episode here. Okay. We well, have. We've been on for 40 minutes. Cup shy. This one's from Ben. Hopefully not that one. Hi, William and Jordan. Ten Help, how do I start an HR department? <laughs> Ten years ago, I was studying for my degree in Cambridge when a fellow student and I were giving city tours to prospective students, which included punting. A couple of American people in the group wanted to know how they could do this as a job during the summer break, as they didn't want to keep flying to and from America. When I asked the gentleman how we could do punt chauffeuring during the summer, he pulled down his fake Ray-Ban sunglasses, looked me up and down, sniggered and said, sorry mate, but clearly you have to be good looking for this job, and laughed with his co-worker. Oh, that's terrible. Mortified, we moved on with the tour. However, within a few minutes, my fellow student asked if I was okay, but I just laughed it off. She was clearly angry at what happened and explained to me that she was in her final year studying journalism and that she could write an article on whether looks mattered in, in employment in 2013. I agreed and she wrote a lovely piece for the local newspaper and I was really pleased with it. However, in block capitals. Monday morning comes around and my phone starts going mad with messages from random people asking if they could talk to me about the article in the paper. I spoke to a couple of different local reporters over the phone and thought that was it. I then went across to Tesco where I walked in and saw... <laughs> Sorry. And I saw the newspaper stand and to my horror, I made the front page with the headlines including Man Too Ugly to Punt. <laughs> I then looked online and saw... How did he come up, think him up? I'd love to come up with headlines. Wait for it. I then looked <laughs> online and saw one paper in America, even ran with the headline, Punter Munter. <laughs> of 
<laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. It's not funny. I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh. Within days, I had hoped it would die down, but Dr. I. Malta. <laughs> but I even got asked to appear on TV shows about it, including the Katie Hopkins TV show, Russell Howard's Good News, and to top it off, I was a £10,000 question on the right show. Even today, if you type into Google Images Ugly in Cambridge, my face comes up. I still get recognised to this day. One only last week on Tinder, some guy said he recognised my no. face and then unmatched me. <gasps> so I want to know, how do I deal with this forever haunting me? And do people have to be good looking for certain jobs? All the best, Ben. It is from ben. you, isn't it, Ben? <laughs> it is. Oh, Ben, ugly. In Cambridge. Punter. I've got it. Oh, Ben's got, this Ben's got it. Uh, ben, oh, we won't put it on images. Don't say his name. <laughs> but, well, I mean, you, you can find it yourself. If you yes, but to. I don't feel we need to be. He's not ugly. Let's have a look. Ben's quite handsome. No, he's not ugly. He's not ugly at all. Oh, Ben. I'm sorry, Ben. That's, yeah. That's awful that people I, said Do that. you know what they've made you do there? I'm just looking. That is a typical local newspaper yeah. post. Yeah. <laughs> Can you just fold do, your Can you describe and, what you can see? It's it's Ben outside uh, on a river. On a river outside Presumably a, in Cambridge. a punting office, and he's made him fold his arms. Like you just look a bit angry, a bit upset. Well, it's like when people do the sort of before and after, sort of when they've lost weight, and the sort of the before photo they're looking absolutely miserable, and then afterwards they're just so happy. Ben, and I think that's more of a modern picture of Ben, and you, you look very handsome to us, Ben. We hope one day that you make it as a punter. Should I get one of these pictures taken with my earring? Yes, we could have this, Ben. <gasps> oh, it looking could be. miserable by <laughs> the headline by the Thames. Podcast producer taking the piss out of. <laughs> Piercing, yeah. piss, piss, piss off. Piss off. Yes, pierced off. Uh, what was Ben's <laughs> question? Just to I summarize. mean, look, this is this is. I guess Ben, in in hindsight, you wouldn't have said to this friend who was doing journalism. Yes, write this article because you probably didn't want all this harassment that that happened. Um, I would like to think maybe you can find the the funny side in this because of the way you've written the letter with Punta Munta, etc. Um, I hope, look, I hope if you did go on to Katie Hopkins' TV show, Russell Howe's Good News and the Right Show, you at least made a bit of money off the back of it. Um, that's all I can say. Um, but sorry about that. Um, I don't know how you get something removed off Google. I don't think. I think that I think there are ways, yeah. um, but I don't quite know what those ways are. But I'm sure you could Google them, ironically, <laughs> unless someone's removed them. <laughs> You're right, Geordie. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm just reading another message saying uh, from a G and Diva. Yeah. Right. Do you want to read it out? No, no sorry, sorry. I'm miles away. She said I'm just someone else diagnosing me. Apparently, I might not have ADHD. EFD. <laughs> EFD. Executive functioning disorder. Yeah, there's nothing executive about your and functioning I'm disorder. <laughs> <laughs> so you were just reading that message in the middle of a recording. Oh, sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm jet lagged. Good luck to Vic later. I know, yeah. I've got to go and do the radio now. <laughs> yeah, I've only got you for an hour. She's got you for... That's right. Mondays do themselves. Do they? Yeah, what you have for your tea. Right. Some quick songs. Oh, actually, no. Got a full two hours to fill. Oh, God, I better get going, actually. Uh, well, look, let's hope for the bonus on Friday. You're a bit more present. You've had a bit more rest. Oh, that's a bit oh, harsh. No, oh, sorry, I didn't mean it like that. No, but I was just letting you go, as it were. Oh. No, no, no. I've enjo Do you know, darling, I have enjoyed seeing you. We should also say to people that we have each changed each other's names in our phone book to Jordan North, bracket Sunday Times bestselling author. <laughs> I, I, I didn't change yours. Oh. I suppose you said you were going to. Yeah, but... I'm going to delete your number now. Speaking of presents, I'll take that back. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, what a shame. <laughs> it's a little chic. I'll help that up. It's not chic, it's. <laughs> you chic. are funny. You can give it your mum when she's smoking a big long cigarette. Yes. Like Tanya Turner. <laughs> oh. Always remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us on YouTube on Wednesdays and Fridays. And you can share us on your socials all week. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sextofmyboss.com. Or you can tweet us or message us on Instagram at sextofmyboss. You can also buy our book on the website, sextofmyboss.com forward slash book. Or you can write to William, who in the fullness of time promises a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greeting cards with executive self seal envelopes. The address is on the website, sextedmyboss.com. Ben's got his hand up in the air. 
Um, there is a there is there's there is something that's going to be worth listening to in next week's Tuesday episode. Just because you've got an earring, don't mean you have to sound like a pirate. <laughs> you did, you did. <laughs> he did. Who <laughs> are? There was a there was a curled sound. Who <laughs> are? Right. So, sorry, Ben. Sorry, we we I think we slightly quashed his news. Tell us. Well, there's no news. It's just that there will be news in next week's Tuesday episode. Yeah. Really? Is is the news next week book related? No. It's not book related. No, there's something new. Something new? Something new, new news. Can I, I really need a week. Can we end this episode now, please? All right. We'll see you for the bonus on Friday. Mm-hmm.